let me state I think it's important to uh, briefly uh, advise you. You got a telephone too? <laughs> I need to oh, well, that's a good idea. Turn it off. Uh, what the admission is is all about, uh, and that's the admission of the ICFET. Uh, it's organized by members from Taiwan and all over the world who really feel very strongly about Taiwan's democracy and the rights of the Taiwanese people to fair, open elections under uh, federal law. And, uh, and, uh, Individual members may have personal preferences uh, relative to the candidates and the parties, but I want to emphasize the organization is not supporting any any particular candidate or any uh, particular party. The objective is simply to observe uh, the election firsthand and record and speak on what we see. And uh, we also are very appreciative of the advancement of uh, democracy and we'll do uh, whatever we can to help Taiwan uh, continue in that road. Uh, and, and we've been pretty busy the last four days. We visited a, a number of communities, uh, Kaohsiung, uh, of course Taipei, New Taipei. Uh, uh, we, uh, <coughs> we have been in Tainan. And also uh, have met with a number of candidates for the parliament, as well as representatives of all three of the political parties. And uh, uh, we've also observed a couple of rallies and parades in Tainan, which were quite exciting. The KMT was uh, <coughs> there in uh, open jeeps, uh, and the DPP was there, and there were lots of fireworks, so it was quite exciting. So. Our final observation up to this point, at least, is it's been an orderly yet very energetic process of the democratic system underway. However, uh, during the uh, last two days before the election, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, some rather surprising activities and reports. I have the China Post before me, and I also have uh, <coughs> Taiwan, uh, Taipei Times uh, before me. And uh, <clears throat> there are some statements in there that I think bear examination uh, because uh, the numerous uh, media outlets um, have highlighted some statements from the former AIT official Doug Paul suggesting that, uh, uh, and this was stated in uh, today's China Post, that the U.S. finds the possibility of the DPP uh, ruling Taiwan uh, as threatening and sees the DPP candidate Tai uh, proposed Taiwan consensus as an impractical uh, consensus. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to speak as a former U.S. official uh, in response to Mr. Paul's former U.S. association as head of AIT. Now, if the articles are factual, in the sense of being an accurate reference to Mr. Paul's statement, I take strong issue with any inference that the United States policy towards Taiwan favors one candidate or one party over another. That is simply not the case. Further, uh, today I had the pleasure of talking to <coughs> the AIT director Director Stanton, and he uh, has made, I think, AIT's position quite clear that the U.S. remains neutral in this election, and uh, he reassured me of that on the telephone today. Further, we've had numerous statements from the State Department, Mr. Campbell, uh, restating <coughs> the neutrality uh, of the United States. So again, as uh, speaking as a former United States Senator for 22 years in government, I speak as an individual, but a former U.S. official, <laughs> countering, uh, to some extent, the comments of, uh, of <clears throat> Mr. Doug Paul. So in my opinion, Mr. Paul's opposition to a, um, uh, a Taiwan consensus <coughs> must be his own opinion, but to suggest it's a, quote, game, unquote, is hardly a fair assessment I think, of the will of the Taiwanese voters. Uh, and 
and their uh, efforts perhaps to bind together on a bipartisan effort to come up with a unified solution to the Cross Straits issue. Uh, his further uh, reference, if Ty wins, is uh, his evident belief that the U.S. government will be, quote, massively and quickly engaged to try and help her uh, at this uh, President Ty, uh, if she's successful, help her develop a formula that would preserve cross states peace and stability. Uh, I find that personally uh, condescending. She is a very well-educated and seasoned politician and fully capable of proposing a unified Taiwan solution. Further, uh, I think there's been too much made of the so-called secret leak uh, that occurred in the Financial Times. Uh, I think the U.S. has tried to make it clear in <coughs> reference that Washington somehow mistrusts uh, Tai in her proposed handling of cross-strait relations is, is, is totally inaccurate and, and frankly false. Uh, now why uh, Mr. Paul would state that uh, was uh, further identified in his reference to, quote, a private feeling of senior administrative officials generally, uh, I, I think is hardly appropriate because it's editorializing, uh, to say the least. Finally, the further reference that ties assurance to Washington about cross-strait relationships uh, and proposals were too vague to make Washington comfortable. Well, I can assure you Washington is never very comfortable about anything. <laughs> so to mix things up a little further, I think uh, the statements that he's uh, made or the attributed to by the media are a little careless, a little irresponsible from a former U.S. official, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, there needs to be a restatement of U.S. policy, although I think it's been quite clear uh, whether there needs to be another restatement from AIT. Uh, that's in the eyes of the beholder because their position is made clear, but I think uh, some of his comments are a bit inexcusable. I read with interest the Taipei Times uh, this morning, and uh, uh, according to the Times, uh, Mr. Paul uh, leads a group of distinguished scholars, and this is in today's paper, who come to Taiwan uh, at the invitation of the Prospect Foundation, which they identify as a KMT affiliated institute and are here to, quote, observe, unquote. So uh, the bottom line there is that this is quite a contrast to the mission of our group to observe and report but not support any one candidate <coughs> or any party. So in conclusion, although Nancy <coughs> seldom believes I'm concluding. <laughs> I, I speak solely as a, a private U.S. citizen, uh, but a 20-year 20 20 official of the United States Senate and former governor of our state, as I stated earlier. So uh, I, I do challenge the credibility of some of Mr. Paul's statements to speak for me or to speak for my government or for the vast majority of Americans who have great admiration for the advancement of democracy in Taiwan. Uh, finally, uh, speaking as a member of, of the committee, we collectively feel that this election is about the people of Taiwan making a free choice. And that's a choice between the status quo and a choice between change. And that's a choice, we believe, is for the people of Taiwan to make, and we wish them well. Hi. It, it seems uh, clear to me, though, that he's here as a private citizen, former official. What's so terrible about him just expressing his opinion on, on the election, <coughs> just as a private citizen of an American? Do you feel that 
Taiwan's democracy so fragile that it has an outside impact? Or why, I guess, what, why, why make it a big deal? Out of this? What is what is the threat here to the election? Well, I, I think to a degree, uh, you know, the, the 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 media portrays uh, a position uh, of the United States in in, in the eyes of uh, Doug Paul. And I don't think that's a fair reflection on the position of the United States, which is neutrality in this election. And uh, I don't know what degree his objectivity is. You'll have to ask him. But uh, clearly, from the media reports, he's hardly objective as an observer. And that's my opinion. Um, as a former official, you would okay. Hi, Francis Moriarty, RTHK. As a former official, you would know that governments often have a public position and a private position, a formal position and an informal position. And if they wish to express an informal position that might be not entirely in sync with the official position, the use of a former official well known in the place affected by the comments would be a very normal conduit for making that remark. So do you think that perhaps this is a message from the current administration being sent through someone uh, who would be well known here? Well, we can all uh, make suppositions, uh, but I find it rather curious that two days before the election uh, he comes uh, to Taiwan. I don't know how much earlier he's been here, but uh, uh, he could have uh, carried that position a week ago or three days ago or whatever, but to come in uh, two days before the election with such a sweeping uh, interpretation of what U.S. policy is, uh, I find uh, uh, basically unacceptable in the sense of fairness and uh, I think it, it, it slights uh, and confuses and perhaps puts fear in the uh, uh, residents uh, of Taiwan who are going to be voting that somehow the United States uh, uh, does not really support neutrality, but rather something in between. And I, I, I think that's, <coughs> I don't think that's the uh, uh, intention of the U.S. and I don't think uh, it's an honorable position to communicate to Taiwan. And I don't believe it's the position of the administration, or certainly the Congress of the United States either. Just like uh, uh, the article that appeared in the Financial Times uh, that has been uh, denied by uh, the top levels in our government. Yet it created doubt whether these things are perpetrated as a part of the political process. That's anybody's guess, you know better than I. Does it amount to intervening in Taiwan's affairs? Well, it wouldn't be the first time there was a political <laughs> intervention, and uh, you know that doesn't—it's uh, not unique to Taiwan uh, any more than it is, to, you know, uh, an election in the United States. But uh, you have to call them as you see them. And what what I fear is that somehow these statements that I think are inaccurate will have some impact on the people of Taiwan who fear that the U.S. is waffling or is fearful of re repercussions from the mainland or somehow softening its position to commit to Taiwan's uh, advanced democracy, whether it's to adhere to the Taiwan Relations Act commitments or various other uh, commitments that we've made to Taiwan. We say we support the democratic process. Uh, and then. Uh, some of the reports uh, suggest something to the contrary. 